Hello everybody and welcome back to another C++ SDL programming tutorial. In the last tutorial we built a, uh, we built a pretty simple class, uh, just a sprite class that will display kind of an image on the screen, an SDL surface on the screen for us. It keeps track of uh, properties like X and Y values because of its, its rectangle and we built the functions to be able to draw and, and update with it. So we have a pretty basic framework for uh, a sprite system in, in any games that we make. I'll show you how it works when we actually run it. Once we've compiled it, I can just bring over the, the program that runs to you. Right now, we just have a sprite with an origin in the center, centered uh, at the center of the screen, obviously. So, cool. Very, very cool. Now, we have to get into the question, though, as to what will happen when we have multiple sprites. How do we keep track of them all? How do we be able to draw each one on the screen where it needs to be, and maybe even determine which sprite is in front of what, and, and, and that sort of thing. So, what this actually breaks down to is, is a new concept and in a, in a, even a, eventually a new class that we have to create called a sprite group. Now, I was telling you guys in the last video, in the, in the last tutorial, that I have been basing a lot of the, the ideas and the, and the code and the logic flow for this series off of the ideas and the logic flow and stuff uh, off of Pygame and my Pygame Python programming tutorial series. So, Pygame has uh, in its sprite little sub-module, it has a sprite group uh, along with a sprite class. So uh, the sprite up here has functions, update and and uh, and and draw. It doesn't actually have draw, but we put it in in our in our sprite so we can be able to work with it. Uh, actually, that sprite in particular in our code. So. It has add, this will add it to groups, it has remove, it'll remove it from groups, and uh, kill and alive also have to do with groups. Oh, and look, it even says the base class for visible game sprites. Derive classes 1 will override the sprite that update function, which is exactly what we did in our code. We had that, uh, we had that over update function that can over definitely be derived and, and changed. Okay. And this uses the same sprite.image and sprite.rect attributes that we set up. Okay, um, next we'll move into the group, actually. I remember I was telling you sprite groups. And this container is a class that holds and manages multiple sprite objects. So we want to go ahead and kind of copy this. Copy this idea, copy this framework. It has a list of the sprites it's using, copy function, add function, and all these things that will remove sprites and add sprites and, and that sort of thing. So we need to be able to contain and hold and manage multiple sprite objects. Now, I'm sure you're thinking, Okay, well, we do this with a list, right? Uh, a list of multiple vi values and variables that we can keep track of. And in, in C++, you've got a list, right? You've got the array, but that doesn't really... You, you can't change the value as, as you go along. You can't change the length of the, the array. We have to use a vector. We have to use a standard template library vector that will be able to dynamically change as we add more and more things to the list and to the container. So, what we have to do... Over at the top of our code here, we have to include and use our uh, less than and greater than symbols to uh, denote we're using something from the standard template library. We want to include vector. Now, I'll hop on over back to the internet and look up C++ vector, just so we have the documentation ready and active for us. Uh, vectors are sequence containers representing arrays that can change in size. So, it's uh, got a lot of good uh, kind of values, uh, properties, members, functions and stuff that we'll be uh, using throughout the rest of the, the, the series. Uh, not so much the series, but at least the tutorial today and right now. Okay, enough of me blabbering. Let's actually write some code. We want a new class. We want this class to be called the Sprite Group. Have our code block end it here. And of course we want the private and public data type variables. Okay. Uh, just like I told you, we want to use a vector. And since we've included that, we can use it. Oh, actually, I should save a new file. 0607a sprites sprite group. That's CPP. Okay, cool. Sorry, just had to save over that. Lost my train of thought. We are using vectors, so that's uh, what we want to use here. Remember, we are using namespace standard, so we don't have to include standard colon colon for the uh, C++ scope operator. We can just type in vector, and uh, remember, this uh, uses the less than and greater than symbols to denote the type that we want to use, and of course, we're going to be holding lots of sprite objects. Now, here's why I have to bring up an interesting point. Normally, at least, like, here's an example. If you were to pass 
any information into a function, right? If you pass a value into the function, if you pass a variable into a function, it passes in a copy of that variable and that value. Now this makes sense, right? Because if you change if you change the value of the variable inside the function, if you go out of the function, you access that same variable. It's not going to have the, the the value that you set in the function because of scope, right? Unless you're using a global variable and changing it in the function, you're not going to have the same results as what you've been using in the function. So this is kind of similar with vectors. We when we pass in, when we add a sprite object to the vector, we're not actually really passing in that object itself. We're, we're, we're giving the vector a copy of the sprite object. But we don't want to do that. Because if we're going to be using this sprite group to draw multiple sprites at the same time, if we're going to be using this to update multiple sprites at the same time, to move even multiple sprites at the same time, well, we, need, we actually need the object itself. We need the real legitimate object that we've been trying to keep track of. So, we actually need the legitimate object, and the way that we receive it, the way that we access it, is by accessing these variables in memory. So we have to use pointers. And that was a big long spiel, just for me to say that, yeah, we need the freaking asterisk right here. It's a vector that is full of pointers to sprite objects, so that way we can actually access the sprite object itself rather than a copy of it. So uh, this vector, th this this data type, this this variable anyway, I'm just going to call mine sprites. You can call it whatever you'd like. You can call it sprite group, sprite list. It doesn't really matter. And I'm just going to keep track of the sprite size in a um, in its own separate variable. This way we don't have to repeatedly uh, look for the sprite size by accessing the function of the vector, because you, you, you know this, uh, this function has it uh, in, in the vector uh, documentation. The object of a vector itself will return its size, just with this dot size function, but I'm going to keep that in a, in, a, in a variable just so we don't have to keep calling it back and forth, because we have a lot of functions where we actually are going to loop through everything in this, in this group, in the vector. Okay. Now, if we hop on back over to the Pygame kind of list here, um, sprites is a list of sprites that the group contains. So, the way that we actually really kind of set that up is by uh, creating a new function. And that new function is going to be called, in our case, get sprites. What this does is it's going to return the vector, so we actually need the, the same type that we had right up here. Vector, sprite, with uh, that, that, that pointer. Vector, sprite, get sprites. And this is very, very simple. All it does is it return, returns the sprites, the variable that we've been working with all along. Next, we have sprite.group copy, and this will duplicate the group. Well, okay, that's pretty simple. It'll do the exact same thing. It will create a new sprite group object. Um, so, well, obviously the return type then is a sprite group. And, uh, this function will be called copy. Doesn't really take any parameters, but we'll leave some white space in there. And um, we want to create a new group, so let's have a variable new group. And that's obviously going to be the type of the sprite group. And let's fill that with everything inside our group already. So, we do this with a for loop. We're going to loop through everything. We're going to say for int i equals zero. i is less than sprite's size. And notice we're using this variable here rather than actually calling sprites dot size, so we don't have to keep calling that function over and over again. We can just access the variable, and we'll increment i. Cool. Now what we'll do is we'll do new group dot add sprites index at i at the current position, and then we'll go ahead and return the new group. Cool. So this function is done. Pretty easy, right? Well, you might be asking me what the hell? <laughs> and uh, some of you might not know what I'm referring to here, but w what the heck am I talking about with this new group dot add function? If we're using a sprite group object, we haven't even created this add function at all. So what are we doing? Well, you're right. We haven't created that add function yet. Let's do that. Is it next? Yeah, it's next. All right, cool. So let's add that. Pretty, pretty simple, right? New function, void doesn't do anything, doesn't return anything, all it will do is it will add, obviously, the argument of the sprite that we're adding. It takes it as a pointer, remember, because we're adding a, uh, a list 
uh, uh, at least a vector of sprite objects. And inside this function, what we do is we push back. And uh, that's a function for our, our vector, sprites.pushback, with the actual sprite. And then, of course, we'll, we'll get the size for it. Sprites size can equal sprites dot size. Cool. Now, pushback, if you haven't seen this before, it's just the, the simple, simple, simple function that will add anything to the vector. Um, it adds it at the very end, I believe. I want to see. Add an element at the end. Pushback. Yep. Just a simple function. Really, really easy. Just adds it to the vector. That's all we need to do for that function. <laughs> cool. Let's see. What do we got next here? We've got remove. Okay, remove sprites from the group. This is where we get a little bit hectic. Let me show you why. Void remove. It's not going to return anything. It's just going to remove it from the the group. Sprite. It obviously needs to know what sprite we're removing. And let's say sprite object. I'm not going to use a pointer here. Now, you might be asking me why, and I'll, uh, I'll tell you in a second here. Create this code. Create this code block. And we'll start to loop through the list. For int i equals zero, you know the drill here. Okay, so now we're looping through the list, we're looping through the, the group. We gotta test something. We gotta test something strange. We gotta test if the sprite that we're currently looking at in the loop is actually equal to the sprite object that we're trying to remove. In that case, then we can actually remove it. Then we can get rid of it in the list, in the sprite group. Well, how are we gonna do that? We created our own, we created our own class, we created something out of scratch, right? We created this, this sprite class. How are we gonna be able to test if something is equal to another one? Typically, you'd just be all like, okay, if uh, sprites i is equal to sprite object, right? That's typically what you do. Well, we can't really do that, because, I mean, we just created this sprite object. It doesn't have that operator. <laughs> we just made it. <laughs> well, this is one of the fascinating benefits of C++ and, and, and C, where we actually go ahead and create our own operators. And uh, the way that we do this is by creating a new function inside the sprite object class, uh, obviously under the public definitions here. What this is, it's going to return a Boolean variable, Boolean value, whether it's true or false, and we're going to test on an operator, that's a special keyword, you can see it just lit up, changed to be the blue color, and uh, we're going to use is equal to, or uh, these two equal signs for the operator. Now, the arguments here have to be constant, because when we're testing if something is equal to another, obviously neither of those are going to change, because we're actually doing it on the fly, we're just doing it in the code. So, constant, C-O-N-S-T, sprite, and now, the other has to be a pointer. <laughs> the, it has to be a, a legitimate object that we're looking at in memory. So I'm just going to use the ampersand and call it other. Now you will know, okay, that's why he didn't actually include the per, uh, asterisk here, uh, because we're not looking at another pointer. Uh, in, in the other case, we're looking at um, the reference that we've already seen here uh, with the ampersand. So constant sprite other the ampersand to look at the actual reference value, and um, this has to be a constant function itself. So after those parameters in that parameter list with the parentheses, type in the word CONST again. Now we can actually go ahead and create this function, and here's an interesting thing that we're going to do. We're going to return, have open thing parentheses here, we're going to return whether or not the image, if this sprite's uh, image variable, if it's value, this SDL surface, is equal to the others, other dot image. Now, you might be noticing something. Thankfully, thankfully for, for us anyway, thankfully for us, we are very fortunate that this SDL surface does support this operator, because otherwise we would have any idea what to do. <laughs> but you're, you're noticing that image is a private variable. We, we're not going to be able to access it in the other object, so we have to account for that we have to create a new function that will return its internal private parts. SDL 
uh, surface. It's obviously going to return a surface pointer, just like the actual image itself is. And I'll just call mine get image. You can call your function whatever you'd like here. It's not going to take any arguments. It is going to be constant. So include const. And let's just return the image of that object. Now we can use other dot get image and run that function. So we're going to be returning whether or not this sprite's image or its SDL surface place in memory is equal to the other one that we're actually looking at. If it is, then okay, yeah, the sprite on this side of the equal sign and the sprite on the other side of the equal sign are the exact same sprite. Hooray. whoop de doo I wonder if I can at least compile this first of all. G++ 07 A sprites group.cpp. Oh. No, I'm forgetting something. Add. Yep, I forgot a semicolon right over there. Okay, so now that we're all done editing this function, we can go back down to our uh, our remove function in the sprite uh, group object. And uh, what we'll do is we'll be testing if the sprite that we're currently looking at, if this is a pointer, keep in mind, uh, so we include the uh, asterisk right here, if that sprite that we're looking at is equal to the sprite object that we're actually trying to find, what we will do is we can erase it from the sprites. And uh, this is a vector function. If we head it back over to our documentation, um, you'll notice right over here we've got a function erase, erase elements, and what this does is it actually takes an iterator as a, as a variable, so we can actually very, very easily access this iterator by just adding to the vector.begin function and then adding to where we need to be in the index. So like I said, that's pretty simple. Sprites.erase, sprites.begin to access the iterator, and then go ahead and add i to it because we want to get to the current index that we're actually looking at. Awesome. Now let's break right out of there, break out of that for loop, and sprite size is obviously being changed here, so we have to remember to actually uh, go ahead and reset the variable. Cool. Now we've got some more functions to add. We've got uh, sprite group, test if a group has sprites. Well, that's a pretty easy thing to do. All we have to do is create a new boolean function. Bool has and this will take a sprite, I'll call mine sprite object again. And this will kind of have the same functionality as the uh, remove function. Um, we'll look through there. If it is equal, what we will do is we will return true. Yes, it is the same function. It is the same sprite. Otherwise, we'll return false. That means uh, if it has this object, if we found it in the group, it does exist. The group does have that sprite. Update. Well, update, thankfully, will just recall the update function of all the sprites in the group. Because this is something that all sprite objects have. Super duper cool. So, let's create a new uh, variable here. A new function, sorry. This isn't going to have a return type. It's just going to be void. It'll be update. And it's not going to take any function, any function parameters or function arguments. Loop through all of it. But the thing that we have to test first before we actually loop through all of it is whether or not the group uh, is empty. And the way that we do that is we test if not sprites dot empty. And again, this is a vector function. Uh, you can find it in the documentation. Empty right over here is a function to determine whether or not the vector is empty. Uh, it's a boolean variable that it returns. It's just simply yes or no. So if it is not, if it is empty, we won't do anything. If it's not empty, then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and loop through all of it. Actually, we don't need this return false. Loop through all of it and go ahead and uh, use the sprites dot i. Remember, it is a pointer. So we actually have to use the pointer selector update function. Super duper cool. What else have we got? What other functions have we got? I don't know to pie game. Update draw. Draw is pretty simple. It does the exact same thing as update. We'll recall all of the other uh, sprite object functions. Draw. 
Okay. And uh, what else? Clear. Hmm. Draw background of his rights. Well, I won't bother with that. It's we don't have to. We don't have to waste our time with that. Empty though. Empty some something that we can do. That should be pretty easy. All that does is return all the. Uh, it doesn't return anything, but it, it it removes all the sprites. And we can do that with a very very simple um, vector function. And that one is sprites the vector dot clear. <laughs> does exactly what the function's name is, other than empty itself. So, void empty, sprites.clear, and obviously that's changing the size, so we want to set size equal to sprites.size. Bam! Okay. I believe we're done. Actually, I will add, however, a small function in size, and that'll just return sprite size. So that way we can see the sprites, the group size outside of the actual class itself. Now, looking through all this code, I think we're good with this sprite group. <laughs> that took freaking forever, but I think it's finally done. Let's let's do a few experiments. Let's bring it down into our main event loop, our main function, and rather than draw, rather than draw the sprite object that we've created, what we'll do. This will create a sprite group. I'll call mine act I'll call mine active sprites. You can call yours whatever you'd like. Let's do active sprites dot add. Now remember we created this function, and what it does is it'll actually take in a pointer. So we have to pass in the reference to this object, reference to the variable itself. The way that we do that is with the ampersand. So let's pass an object. Cool. Now we can run active sprites dot draw onto the screen, and no matter how many sprites we have in our active sprites group, it will be drawn onto the screen. In this case, it's only the simple object, the single solitary object, but it will be drawn onto the screen. Hopefully, this works for us. Let's check it out. Let's find out. Head on over to my terminal. Uh, I'll G plus plus O seven A sprite group. Hopefully this compiles. No, it doesn't. Okay, damn it. Oh, yeah, of course. The draw function is going to need an, uh, uh, an argument there. In our sprite group, we've got a draw function. And what this takes is an SDL surface pointer for the destination. And, of course, we pass this right into our draw function right here. So, super duper cool. Now we should be ready. Let's try and compile this. Cool, that works just well for us. A dot out. If I move this over, boom! We've got our object right here. Fantastic. Let's do this with a few more objects, just so we see uh, how this works works with multiple sprites. Uh, I'm going to add a new color. I'll call this blue. And, of course, R will be 0, 0 for G, and 255 for B, for blue. Get a new object, uh, another, I'll call it another, and the color will be blue, window width minus 100, window height plus 20. Now we add this to our active sprites list, another, and we should be good. Let's run this. Compile, and run, bring this right over, and whoa, there's our other object. Other, our other sprite. It's in the group, and it's being drawn automatically without us having to invoke its its particular object itself. Let's do let's do something else. We'll do if active sprites dot uh, let's see remove object. This way we won't draw the red object, but only the blue one because we've added it to the screen, and then we've gone ahead and removed it. Check it out. Let's see if this works for us. Compile and run and. No more red! Sweet! Our remove function works. That's awesome. Draw works. Remove works. Uh, we haven't been able to have play with update yet, everything, at least so far. Uh, let's let's do some output. Let's do active sprites dot has object. And let's do endl. Hopefully this will work for us. Compile. And yes, we see the value 1 right here. Um, the program knows, it, it does see that, okay, the object, the red object, is in the group. 
if we uh, don't add the another object, the another sprite, uh, I commented out that line, if we check, does it have another? Well, compile it, run, you'll see that it's zero, it's false, it doesn't have that. So uh, that function works very easily just as well for us as well. So, man, we are freaking on a roll here. It took forever, it took a long, long time to create that class. It's been a long video, but it works for us. We've got something that's 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 flexible. It'll be able to keep track of all of our sprites and, and and work well for us in our in our program. So man, we are good. We've got the freaking group sprite group class. Oh man, I, I just tried to lean back and put my head on my forehead, and I like threw my microphone off me. Huh. Thank you for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this. I know it took a long, long time, but I hope you enjoyed it because now we can move on to the whole rest of the C++ SDL programming tutorial series. And, uh, well, I hope you're enjoying. If you are enjoying, please like the video, maybe comment. Please subscribe if you're willing, and uh, hopefully I'll see you again. Adios.